Hello, beloved. It's me, Robin. Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and light sparkler at RobinHallett.com. And this is Tea with Robin. On today's episode, the experience we're having. Do you ever wonder why you're having that experience? And if you're ready to be done with this experience you're having, (laughs) how do we do that? Well, we're going to talk about that today. Our inspiration is something I like to call the shift list. That's with an F, not a T, my friends. But it has something to do with that, too. And we'll have a beautiful letter from a friend who's wondering, how do I stop these repetitive things that keep happening in my life? Hashtag freedom. All this and more. Come grab a cup of yum yum and meet me here. And before I begin today's episode, I wanted to say it it looks like we've elected a president in the U.S. of A. I wanted to tell you that because I recorded this episode on a Thursday before the results were really in. And, you know, I love the evergreen nature of this podcast so much, but I wanted you to know that I know now that the election looks like we got somebody, I think. (laughs) Anyway, God bless us all, and let's get on with this amazing, beautiful show. Hi, beautiful friend. It's me, Robin. Welcome back to the podcast, Tea with Robin. This is episode 114, 114. If it's your first time here, hello, welcome. May this be a source of inspiration and light and deeper access to your own good knowing. Friends returning, howdy doody, how are you? How's the weather in your heart? Have you been a little, little kind, a little gentle with yourself these days? I notice we're moving through bigger and bigger energies of potential freedom and joy despite all that's going on now. There are waves of energy I can sense that are so big. There's a lot of potential to do a lot of deeper work so that you can free yourself up now. And always that brings some tumult with it, some struggly, stressy, strainy, struggly stuff. So if you've been feeling that way, you're probably just cooking along in perfection, (laughs) the juices of perfection these days. Um, I hope that you're being kind and gentle with your growth and your process. Yeah. Over here, it's a beautiful day. I'm recording on a Thursday. In fact, November 5th, there's still no news about the election. (laughs) And um, I... And... London, I don't know if it's all of you in the UK, all throughout the UK, you guys have just started your your second lockdown, lockdown 2.0. Um, wow, you know, there's so much going on. And also nothing at all, right? You know how that place in you where you're like, everything and nothing is happening now. It's always the story I choose to tell. I feel like this is just the experience we're having right now. And the joyful moves are to get ourselves free. I was telling you about how I am. I'm doing really good. Enjoying this day, enjoying this time. Several sessions and had a little opportunity to get together with number one kiddo today and just really admire the growth I am seeing. And everyone, me included. So there's been a big just feels like a big energy day today. Enjoying some sunshine, planting some little trees in my backyard that I ordered from cuttings. And that's been really interesting to see, creating my space the way I want it to be. It's a beautiful thing. So did you bring something yummy to cheers with me? I've got a bottle of Topo Chico here, bubble water. Every now and then I like something fancy and fun. I'm going to cheers you. Here's to us. Here's to the adventure. Here's to the ride. Here's to being free. Cheers. 
Mm. So refreshing. So friends, before I dive in, a couple of announcements. One is there's a healing circle happening this week. If you're listening in real time and you'd like to participate in some healing to receive some light for yourself, there's a small group of us who gather. You are more than welcome. A spot for you if this is that time. So link and profile. And the other is I've made the decision to end the regular morning magic get togethers over on Instagram. And I'm going to talk about that a bit coming up. I decided today I'm going to keep this real and allow the format just to be because it has been as what we call a crazy week. It has been a wacky week and I've been paying attention to how we make things harder for ourselves and all of this healing sessions I had this week, all of the conversations I've had, we keep coming back around to this is the experience you are having. This is the experience you are choosing. This is the experience you are living and you're in charge of that experience and Today, I want it to be smooth and easy. (laughs) I love, I love so much our time together. And that's my fun commitment. And it's good if you're, if you're relating to what I just said there, you know, you got to allow yourself to be free at the same time, free to do what you love, free to offer what you offer, but also to do it in the way that honors you as the one doing it, that Put you as a priority for your first person perspective and a priority in your own life, your own day, your own week. That's a beautiful thing. You might hear the guys next door. They're working, getting the mountain coated and sanded. I guess they're doing a stucco exterior on certain parts of the house. So you might hear some noises. It's a really sweet work crew. I actually am really enjoying the process of having a house built next door to me, something I never thought I would say. I don't know where you live, but I am in one of those neighborhoods where a lot of people are tearing down the old homes. I'm in one of the old homes. (laughs) And I will, you know, as long as I'm living here, I'm guessing it's going to stay that way. I love my house. It's like the Bohemian Shangri-La house. It is amazing where I live, but it's not new or fancy or anything. So when the neighbors next door sold their tiny, their house was even smaller than ours. I decided how I want to roll with the stories because a whole year or more of of construction next to you could drive a person bonkers. Am I right? So it's been wonderful. I don't even know how many months we're into it. Somewhere in the pandemic, they put the fence up to start building. They had already cut all the trees down last year, and then there was a noticeable stall on the work. And then one day, like, the fence went up, and then the bulldozers came. And I was just like, you know, I am going to roll with this in the way I choose to experience it. And I started telling the story I wanted to tell about it because you know I'm here to have an experience and I'm going to have an experience no matter what I want it to be one I'm enjoying I love seeing something being built next door I've noticed that they wave they say hello they're happy they listen to happy music it's really it's really a case for being conscious about what you're doing and what you're putting forward in your life in terms of your thoughts and your actions, that we're always creating the experience we are creating. And maybe we don't realize that's what we're choosing. But as you become more and more intentional with your day and your plans, you realize, hey, I'm here to, I came for an experience, and I'm going to have it. And maybe You know, for some of us, are we ready to be in a new experience with this situation? So I will say it's been wonderful. Um, (laughs) I still remember the day they came to deliver the urinal or whatever. No, it's not called a urinal. The honeypot. Is that any better? They came to, to bring it. And 
I thought, wow, here it comes. This is so fun. I've been practicing on this story for a really long time. Because I kept thinking about that urinal. <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to call it that, you guys, because I can't stop thinking about it that way. Um, I would think about, I love to sit in my cozy kitchen nook and look out the window, which looks out at their property. So I'm watching all this construction going on. And I, I would think sometimes in my upset, like the last thing I want is to stare at a bunch of men using the urinal <laughs> all day long. And so every time something like that would upset me, I would come into my heart and I would say, you know what? I choose the feelings I experience and everything that happens to me, I have asked for. You know, it happens as I've asked for it. Um, so let me be intentional. And I just thought how there are so many beautiful places for this urinal to go. <laughs> Sorry, this outhouse what's it called the outhouse it could go anywhere and the day it was delivered I still remember the truck came up and this one was full of urinals <laughs> why can't I think of the name I will get there and they were like bright disco orange safety orange and there was one deep navy blue one in the back that is one of my favorite colors of all time. This sort of midnight cobalt blue. It was that color. And I was like, that's my urinal. <laughs> Hello, that's my urinal. It's so beautiful. That color, that's mine. And so I'm looking and sure enough, the guy unloads urinals off the back of this truck to get to the dark blue one. And they're like bright orange. There was a turquoise one that was kind of pretty. Um, but, you know, the navy one, the classy urinal, that's the one for me. So they pulled them all down and then they took down the the blue one and brought that onto the property and installed it in a place I can never see it, as a matter of fact. You know, it's not it wasn't hidden around back. It's just the way my house is. You can't see it unless you're really looking hard and I planted a beautiful row of Mexican sunflowers along the property line this year and zinnias. So the garden, the view has been gorgeous. So that's one really cool example for how I know this thing is going to be upsetting. It's something that I've noticed my mind keeps going to. What What's it going to be li like living next to a one year plus construction project? And um not just my thoughts, but all the people. Oh, God, you're going to live next door to construction. You know how people are. They say things to you. Sometimes I'd be out gardening and the neighbors would be like, you better call the village. You better call the contractor. Look where they're digging. So it's funny how you get to practice. You get to practice having the experience you would like instead of the one handed to you by your suffering ego self. And if you're ready to be in a new experience, you can have it. I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to shift into this new experience. I started to say the Course in Miracles prayer from chapter 21 in the section called Responsibility for Sight. It says, I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me I ask for and receive as I have asked. So sometimes we don't realize our upset is doing the asking. <laughs> remember that commercial, let your fingers do the walking? Wasn't that for the yellow pages? Does anyone remember the yellow pages? <laughs> um, don't let your upset do the planning. Because it's always going to lead you into the hole. That's what upset does. That's the function of upset. It's like when you're upset, you're in a hole. You're not at the carnival today. You're in the hole. So how can I help myself not react this way? And in the case of the construction process, it's been beautiful because I made a decision and stuck with it. And it has been fun. I mean, really, there is only one day I could think of, and that was because the power saws were a little bit loud and 
or the mixing truck or something. And I just put the headphones on and listen to music. It's amazing. So how do I keep myself from being annoyed, from being triggered, from being upset, from being, you know, um, hurt, angry, scared, holding my breath? A lot of you have been asking me that in messages and texts this week. I really feel this sense that it's a global thing we're all doing right now. We're going through something where we're all feeling a similar way, but we're not united around the same upset. So, you know, in the U.S., some people are worked up about the election. Overseas, you've got other stuff going on. But to a person, we have our personal journey that we're working on. And that's always much more important to us than any event you know, and that's okay. I had sent an email this week to the love posse. I heard from a lot of you. I'm not so worried about the election, but I am worried about this thing and that thing, and this is going on and it's stressful. And what I notice is this new awareness around how they contribute to their own stressed out vibes. Like it's wild. It's almost like something is is entering here awareness and light is dawning. So yes, we are responsible for what we see. We're the ones choosing the feelings we experience. We're choosing the experience we want to have. So how does that change things for you? What kind of experience do you want to have? Think about what's going on in your life right now. What kind of experience do you want to be having now? I was telling a friend earlier this week that, you know, a simple example is kind of like keeping up with my dishes. Every once in a while, things just blow out of control (laughs) in the kitchen. This happens with my laundry, too, where suddenly things are just hanging. It looks like a beautiful mess, but I can't find things like you, you don't know where your bra went, you know, like you don't know where your favorite pants are. Everything's sort of picked up and organized but it's all laying on something else and the same thing can happen to me with the dishes and I realize like as beautiful as that is and as helpful of a teaching tool as that is sometimes I'll share that um, somewhere I am no longer interested I decided in being the guinea pig who's showing how you live with a mess you know what I mean like I don't want to live in a mess I want to live with it in a state of ease. And ease doesn't necessarily mean cleanly and tidy, but I want to be at peace with it. And so I decided like every day I can do the dishes a little bit while I'm doing other things like waiting for the kettle to boil. I'll do the dishes. You know, I love to cook, but cooking every day is out of the question in terms of what I'm doing and my interests and my work schedule, it's out of the question. I won't be able to get everything in I want to do if I also every day have to cook. So I'm cooking every other day or every third day. And that doesn't mean I'm ordering in. That means we have what we call, I call it every man dinner or every man lunch, you know, every man for himself. (laughs) That's saying, I just say we'll have every man and it really is working out well for us. You know, this is your, this is your experience. And you came for that to experience life, whatever your belief system is. You came for an experience of life, to have fun, to work on things that matter to you, to live your life, to explore new horizons, new areas. You didn't necessarily come to experience the difficulties surrounding that, but they're going to present themselves anyway, you know? So we get to choose how we want to roll with these experiences we're having. Isn't that just so good? I mean, and the truth should resonate in your body, even if you're, it feels hard or sometimes I think, oh, this is really good, but I don't know if I can do it. I don't know how to apply it. So we just keep jamming out on this, you know, keep this concept in your heart and keep making the strides, you know, every little bit is awesome. Every little bit 
counts. Okay, so today I was saying earlier I wanted to tell you about morning magic too. This week I made a decision to end morning magic. Hi to you morning magicians. If you're listening, we've been meeting every day for more than 230 days sometimes for an hour, sometimes a half hour to do some healing work and talk about things. And I always held this intention that when it, when the time was right, I would stop and I would know when that time was. And it sure, it sure arrived quickly. I really barely had any time for, um, to process it myself, but, um, I made the decision to end the daily regular morning morning magic and i felt a lot of emotion about it initially and then i realized that that's not the experience i want to have i really took some time and i considered how i want this to be and something i realized is i set out to with certain objectives like I think the first day I, I recorded a morning magic, these are live Instagram lives and all the replays are still available under my account. So you can watch these replays. They're awesome. I was putting them up on YouTube for a long time too, but now they're all on IGTV. And anyway, um, I thought I want everybody to be excited about this decision. I want us all to feel ready to step into the unknown together, to step into the next piece. On a personal level, I just felt ready. I felt ready and I really felt excited to honor this shift. And that really helped me through making the move I needed to make because, you know, I'm sure there are decisions we have to make where we're afraid, we worry about what is going to what other people are going to say or how they're going to handle it and you know I noticed that like it's easy to be worried when you're not though you're not really worried but you can get lost in worry because you're afraid of the unknown does that make sense you've got something big going on you know, tune into yourself and you might realize you're not really worried about it, but you're spending time in the worry because you don't know what else to do. That's what you're used to doing. It's what you've always done. So I've been finding this thing where it's like in me and in the people I've been talking to this week, this thing of we seem to believe we're afraid of making the wrong move, you know, but it's not really the truth. We know the move we want to make. And what we're really afraid of is just saying it like it is. Just handling it how we want to handle it. That's where there's some energy. That's where the intensity is high and it's hard to intuit um, sometimes what your real, your inner knowing is saying, like the divine one in you is saying or the scared one in you is saying. Um So we have to, we have to pay attention. And one of the things I really know for, for me is we came for an experience. Are we liking the experience we're having? You know, you may not overnight be able to change your scenario, whatever's going, think about it, whatever's going on in your life, you might not be able to make an overnight change. But you can make an instant change when you decide, what am I here to experience? What did I come to experience? What am I experiencing in this? And what do I want to experience in this? I'm the one choosing the feelings. I'm the one deciding on the goal. And and Everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I've asked. You know, no, not everybody likes to hear that one. And especially if you've been struggling and suffering, we don't enjoy being reminded of these things. But if they're, they're still the truth. We're in charge. We're in charge. And so I ask myself, what is the experience I want to be experiencing right now? 
whatever the experience is that's happening, how do I want to experience this? You know, and it doesn't matter if I was having my, you know, it doesn't matter the form of the upset, really. It's about how do you want to respond? How do you want to roll in your day? How do you want to be? And do you want your joy to be a priority, even in moments where, like I said, the election or the lockdown or your personal issues going on? You're afraid, you're scared and afraid. How do you want to experience this? You can ask yourself that and you will get answers. I know for me saying, I want to experience a beautiful day. I get up in the mornings and I hug myself. I tell you this, I hug myself and then I follow in the Course in Miracles, the rules for decision. It says, Say only this, like at the beginning of your day, say, talk to God, talk to the Holy Spirit, however you like to look at this, say how you want your day to go. And then if it, and put it out there, you can be specific, you can be detailed, but put it out there in terms of the vibe you want to feel. And then throughout the day, If you find yourself in a position where you're not a match to what you said you wanted to go for, you know, this is where that prayer comes. I must have decided wrongly because I'm not at peace. I'm not at joy. I'm not at happy. I'm not at whatever you wanted your word to be. This has got to be our practice. I notice that a lot of times in a healing practice or doing morning magic or doing the podcast, for me, there can be a tendency to sort of hold the door for everybody else, but never really have time for me to explore going through the door myself. And that's just a, I think that's a situation that's not unique to what I do. That's probably where that weird saying, the cobbler's children have no shoes come from, (laughs) you know, um, We want to have time to focus on the things that really matter to us, the things that we would tell a beloved friend to try, the thing we would encourage um, anybody else to do. We need to hold space for us to do that as well. And more and more, I notice that my experience that I want to have is Noting myself as the priority for a change. Noting myself as the priority in my life. And it's a, you know, it's a beautiful place to be because it doesn't feel selfish. It feels correct. It feels correct. And so I wonder if there's something in what I'm saying that feels helpful to you as well because... A lot of people ask me, like, oh, this came up too quite a bit. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? What am I here to do? We can really suffer over that question. But if you keep it simple and you think of yourself as a soul that came to Disneyland for a time, then we get here on the earth And it takes us a long time to be able to walk and talk and speak and function and get to Disneyland on our own somehow, you know, but then you're there and you get to ride the rides and have fun and do your experience. If we think about ourselves as I came here to go to Disneyland, that's the experience I'm going to choose now. (laughs) I'm going to go to Disneyland or Disney World or I don't know. Are we talking to Disneyland and Disney World these days? You know what I'm saying? Some kind of amusement park. An experience. I came here to have my own experience. So noticing me as my priority has changed me. And in a very short amount of time. So my healing practitioner self, for example, is not my purpose. My purpose is joy. My purpose is 
freedom. My purpose is to remember the light and share the light. But that doesn't mean my purpose is to, you know, save other people or hold the door for other people while I never go through it. You know, so it's it's a very cool. It's very it's hugely healing and awakening. And um, I know, you know, a lot of us fall into this thinking. So just I would say sit with how is this a, impacting you today? What I'm saying? Where are you with that story? And, you know, If you need a good place to practice, episode 111, I talk about the nope list, certain things you're going to put on this list to stop pondering about. You're going to advance your story that way. And that's a great one to listen to. And there's so many, you know, in exploring my own journey in terms of what I do and whether or not... um, I'm going to let people down their expectations of me. I'm going to let them down. I'm going to fail them. I think it's better that we find out than continue on with the plan in fear, you know? So some of you are doing things that are really fear-based and you're continuing on in your fear-based plan because you don't know what else you would try. Um, I would say to you, Try it on. This is my experience. I came for this experience. This is my Disney world. Am I liking the rides I'm riding? (laughs) You know, um, this is my experience and I'm ready for a new one. You know, who wants to ride the Dumbo ride 29 times in a row um, and then go home and come back the next time and ride Dumbo again 29 times? How about Space Mountain? How about Space? You know, how about something else? How about the swings? You know, we got to think about this in this way. I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to shift into something more exciting. This has been wonderful. Um, You know, that kind of a thing. So you can encourage yourself. It's good to honor what you loved to honor the joy while you're enjoying it, to honor the trend, the energy of transition, um, and honor the goodbyes. And I suppose keep in mind that everybody's going to have their own experience related to these things. You know? I've been finding a lot of joy in taking care of myself and doing things differently, and it's a beautiful thing. I also want to say, you know, there is something to it for me, like this is the only thing I've ever wanted to do all my life was to make people smile, to make them happy, to ease their hearts, to help them find comfort. That's always been my priority. And at the same time, it's a double edged thing, because if you don't make yourself the priority, and I'm not saying I don't, I do, I am a priority in my life. This is just a new, bigger experience of that right now I'm having. Um, It has to be in balance. So learning to honor yourself, learning to make space for you and your needs, learning to give the pause. I've talked about this before on to take a pause and let yourself have some time for you. It's really, really important. I saw a beautiful... CBS Sunday morning interview with Bob Newhart. Do you remember Bob Newhart? He's like 93 now. And so full of light and so entertaining still. He said, um, you know, when I die, I want to know that I made people laugh. 
I really love that, he said. I love that. I'm going to, I know I'm, I made people laugh. God, when I die, I'm going to get to heaven and God's going to say, well, how do you, how do you think you did? And what did you do with your life? And he said, I'm going to tell God I made people laugh. And God's going to say, go to the short line. <laughs> um, and I, it was such a beautiful thing to hear because I think I made people smile. I make people smile. I make you feel, I hope I help you feel better. I hope I help you decide to feel better for yourself. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Why can't we do that? Why can't that be our joy? If you love to do something like this, but this can't be your only thing. And this also can't be the only thing you do and the only way people you get your validation for yourself, because then you're going to be tied to needing people to think you're the bee's knees. You know? You're going to need, you're going to be tied to this external approval. And that's a very fickle thing. So I don't know, you know, this might just be a really big rambler today, but um, it feels important. I wanted to say all of that to you. You know, it's okay. Don't be afraid to let yourself advance. What do I need to do here? Ask yourself. Your vibes will always tell you when something's off. You know, whatever I said here, I hope there was something that was helpful for you. Again, just keep considering what you're walking through right now. And how do you want to experience this experience? If this thing you're going through now is really your Disneyland? Is this the experience you wanted? And if it isn't, are you ready to make a change? What are you willing to do? You know, no, it might not feel fair. Yes, you might be the only one doing the work. Yes, people probably do need to acknowledge you and um, thank you and all of that stuff. <laughs> um, but you're the one calling the shots here. How do you want this to ex be experienced going forward? It matters. You matter. You matter a lot. So may that serve you today. So inspiration today. <laughs> I love to make lists for myself. I love to write notes to myself in my phone. I I have a little Samsung phone and it has the the app called the Samsung. Do you really need to know all these parts? What is this app called? The Samsung Notes. I kind of like it. So I just open that and start a new note to myself. You can obviously do voice record, but I've learned I've learned that it's better just to type out a list. And whenever I'm freaking out, which happens a lot, because it's normal to have freakouts. It's normal to have struggles and stress. It's normal to have apprehension. It's normal to be afraid. Those are just those moments when the small self in you is at the wheel. And if you want to see your way through these things in a place of peace and freedom, then you have to do something to help yourself through these places, don't you? So I call this my shift list with an F, not a T. But, you know, the kind of list you make with the T, <laughs> you got stuff that is really, really bothering you, things you're afraid of things that you're concerned about, things that you're, you don't know how to help yourself beyond. I'm thinking of so many of you I've talked to over the years who make big, big th changes, like how am I going to move across country? Or how am I going to quit this job I built from scratch? And now everybody's relying on me like these things that just feel so, so, so big and intense. How am I going to ask for $80 million for this project I'm quoting, you know, because that's what I know I need to be charging. Start yourself a shift list. Start yourself a shift list. <laughs> it's 4444 on the recording right now. What does that mean? Write 
things, you're laying there in the dark, probably worrying, right? You're distracted doing the dishes, thinking about this thing that's going on and <laughs> call it a thing. It's, it's funny and it, it helps lighten the mood. Um, you're noticing that you're afraid. You're noticing that you're worried. You're noticing that you're apprehensive. Stop right there and ask yourself, what do you need to hear? Tell me something, you know, that's a pro to this situation changing. You say this to yourself and then you write it down. You know, nothing really changes until we become willing to put in a little bit of the efforting, you know, a little bit of the practice. Efforting was a weird choice of words, but I'm going to go with that. It's like, it seems like too much of an effort to your ego. And it's not though, you have to do it if you want things to change. You know, what, what astronaut got into the rocket ship and never pressed the button and went anywhere? <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense. So start a list. These are sort of your pros to things changing list, and it will help you when you're scared. And I made this um, when I ended Morning Magic. I was very worried about it a little bit <laughs> at times, you know, big, big worry at times. But make yourself a list. So on this one, I kept it here so I could read it to you. So here we go. I'm going to read you my list. Here's what mine says. You're okay. This is important. It's so good to focus on you. Don't be afraid of leaving what's always been familiar. Wow, that was a good one. Don't be afraid of leaving what's always been familiar. There's no safety in the safe choices. Listening to your intuition. Good. Integrity. Yes. Focus on yourself. Woo. I really wrote that. Woo. It's good to focus on you. So you make yourself a list and you keep reading it and you keep writing it as it comes to you. It's powerful. You can write these things and po post them somewhere. You will read them. I told you about this last week, but don't forget to do it, my friend. It's so important to help yourself. A lot of us are going through things that are personal and deep and big. I feel like the energy is rising in a huge way right now. Globally, there is awakening happening this whole month. There is big, big awakening happening. And if should you find yourself in that place where you're like, I know I'm supposed to be doing X, but I cannot make myself try this shift list. See what you can do to help yourself. And equally powerful is to write down the statements you keep making in fear. You know, they'll be mad at me. They'll leave. They won't be my friend anymore. They won't pay me if I stop doing this for free. That's a big one. Anarchy. If I don't do this, anarchy will ensue. A lot of people will tell me that anarchy. Like if you stop doing this thing and with your kids, what will happen? Anarchy will ensue. Well, we need to find out because this sounds like a really powerful story keeping you afraid, actually. <laughs> so give that a whirl. Let me know if you love it. I hope you do. Um, you know, if you see me posting this somewhere on social media, I always love to hear your experience with these things. So cheers. And that reminds me, friends, I love to invite you to support the podcast, to support this love, to support this light getting out there. I know there are so many friends just like us who want to have the experience they choose. They want to go free. They want to be aligned and experience the joy. So I so appreciate if you were to share this podcast on, if you see me posting it somewhere, give it a share, make a new post, forward an email to somebody, send the link in a text, and you can always leave a review. I love reading your reviews. I so appreciate it. 
every app you listen on has an ability to leave a review. I Even my podcast addict app has a way to leave a review. So maybe that's easy and you could hit those. I vote five stars. What about you? Hit those five stars and leave a little review. I would so appreciate it. Thank you very much. So why don't we read this week's letter? I think this is one we're all going to relate to. If you have upsets that happen, regular upsets, familiar upsets, repetitive upsets, (laughs) this is for us all. Hello, Robin. Thank you so much for offering to read a letter and shine a light for us always. My question is about the way things seem to repeat. It's almost like a cyclical thing. My upset seems to be tied to other people. I feel distressed by them, the way they behave, the things they say, the certain situations we find ourselves in. It seems like old stress, even though, like you say, now is always new. We're in the moment, but this stuff is very present, too, and it seems so hard to fight it off. I hang on, I hang on to a story that if only the other people in my life would get better or change or learn or grow, I could find freedom. Please help. How do I deal with my repetitive situations? It's almost like I can see the problem coming and I don't know what to do to stop it. Thanks so much for all you do, Cheryl. Well, hello, beautiful Cheryl. Thank you so much for this letter. It's one I am certain many, many, many of us understand and know. In fact, probably to a person, we would say, yep, there are certain situations that definitely bring old stress to the fore. And we struggle fighting it off, as you say. Um, We hang on to stories. We hang on to problems. We blame the person that is doing it for our, our response, eliciting this response in us, you know. Um, And also how you said, we see the problem coming and it's like, you don't know what to do, but it's almost like you can't get out of it. You, you see it coming head on and you can't get out of the way, um, in time. So, you know, in my heart, I say to you, normal, normal, normal. This is the journey. This is the practice. We must practice kindness and love and mercy for ourselves first. And I talked about this quite a bit in episode 112, which is actually what you responded to here. But just for anyone listening, um, episode 112, I talk more and more about how do you stay present with your own heart? How do you stay in your center and help yourself through these emotionally dense situations? So, you know... Certain situations are going to be triggering for you because you are a soul that came for an experience. Part of what you wanted to experience is, let's say, greater freedom, greater ease, greater joy. Um, I'm, I'm not so much a fan of, you know, we came to learn a lesson But I do know that we came to learn things. And part of that is we have to blow through certain too tight spaces for ourselves so that we can experience the expansion and the joy that we really wanted to to feel. The freedom to do things, just be lost in your joy and not worry about your responsibilities. That's a struggle for a lot of people. And so something so simple that you think probably my soul would love to experience you have to blow through a lot of blockages to get to that point. And then if you're going with the big group, with your family, you know, there's all these things. So all these potential places where we can get hung up. 
So the first thing is just to know this is part of it. It doesn't have to be such a big deal. If we can accept this as part of it, I'm going to have areas where I get triggered, I get sullen, I get down, I get distressed by other people. I don't want to do things. Um, you know, I feel sad. My feelings get hurt. I'm saying I and my, but I'm not talking about myself specifically. Um, you know, there's things that happen and we get stressed out. So this is a very, you just named a very, very normal process. The big thing is, how do you want your experience to be? You must keep asking yourself this because people will keep showing up as they are, just like you do. You said it yourself. I see things coming and I respond the same way. Part of that is just your nature. You know, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with the other people. We're, we're being in our nature. And if we could accept one another as we truly are, it would be a lot easier. This is the way it is, is a beautiful thing to say. It doesn't mean you're giving up hope. You know, it means you're willing to accept that people are how they are. And if we need them to change so that we're less triggered or pissy or um, annoyed or hurt, hey, we got to change us. That's where we have to make the change. You know, demanding or insisting or feeling like it's the other person that needs to make a change so we can have peace. It's such a losing streak. We're never going to get there. And and I don't want um, anybody to spend time on that. But I know people who are lost for decades in that story. And, you know, it sounds like my first 10, 10 years in traditional therapy, actually, you know, just like you're, you just go and you keep talking about other people and what they do wrong and how it hurts your feelings and how it's never going to be okay. And then the therapist is like, how does that make you feel? And da, 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 da. And you should speak up, you should let them know, you should set boundaries. And all of that is helpful in a certain way. But actually, the deepest work is set everybody free. The courtesy, the courtesy extends both ways. Let them be who they are and you do the same. And that means who you are is not somebody who is distressed by the actions of other people. Who you are is a spirit who is free. Who you are is somebody who is choosing to experience her freedom. And you know that because you want to solve this problem you know? So there's no need to fight it off. Acceptance is a huge healing balm here. And to remember, this is the experience you're having. So if you don't want this one, then pick a new one. What experience do you want? You know? What experience do you want? That doesn't involve demanding that people be different. What experience do you want? When you get an answer that's clear and you're in a family, then you, you're in a group situation, then you realize I have to include them in this scenario, how they actually are. I have to accept them how they are. And if they don't like certain things or they like certain things, they have certain preferences or a situation usually creates an event in the same way for them, work with that. I'm not saying throw yourself under the bus. I'm not saying kiss their booty. I'm saying fold that into your knowing. It's like, you know, it's raining outside. You take an umbrella or you get wet. That's it. <laughs> old stress. You mentioned old stress. I would really suggest writing out the sh I talked about the shift list a little while ago. Write out the old stress first. So <laughs> make the shift list with a T instead of an F. Write out your old stress. Don't be afraid to acknowledge it. You can type it up on your phone and delete it when you're done if you're worried about privacy. Um, <laughs> type it up in airplane mode uh, and then delete it when you're done. Uh, if you're worried about privacy, but you know what I mean. Um, 
let yourself really speak it out. What is bothering you? Go through the people, go through the situations. What's bothering you? But I, I encourage you, I want you to remember blame, the blame thrower, we sometimes call it. When you throw blame at other people, you're still, it's still originating within you. The problem is within you. So keep that in mind. Um, keep asking what you bring to the party. Keep sitting with how um, we tend to normally think we're the ones that are all good. And it's always the other people, you know, just stay open to asking. <laughs> it's 55 55 on the recording right now. Just stay open to asking. How, you know, how do I play in this scenario? So, you know, you don't have to fight anything off. You don't have to continue to be the one who accommodates everybody else when it goes south. You know, you can keep yourself as the priority. You matter the most. Keep yourself as the priority. What experience do you want to experience? For me, high ticket stress situations in my life, I have learned to thank those situations deeply because they've taught me that I must honor my needs. And so when you asked about, here comes a familiar situation and I almost feel powerless to make any sudden any changes to what I normally do, that is such a powerful place of awakening for you. Take that. If you have the awareness right after the thing happens and you're like, dang it, I always do it this way. Even though I want to do something different, I still do this thing. You know, and it's usually some version of unkindness or twisting the knife. You know what I mean? It's some kind of thing where we exact a little revenge or a little power play or something happens where you don't feel good about it afterwards. But it can also be where you let yourself be picked at, picked on, talked, disrespected. So old situations that you handle um, the same way over and over, start there. Oh, after it happens, sit with yourself. Oh, this happened again. Okay. This is the experience I'm having. This is the experience I want to have. This is what I'm going to do next time. Be sincere. You only need like two minutes of this. And the next time it starts to happen, I promise you, the light will dawn faster. And you will make the moves you need to make, you know? Even if pe there's pushback to you honoring your needs, so what? Who cares? It's modeling for everybody you know. Everybody needs to learn how to do these things in a healthy way. I'm not talking about selfish, ego, baby, you know, like, it's all about me. <laughs> you know how we get like that sometimes? Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this does not work for me. I know this situation puts me in a place where I could go to crazy town. It could turn into a total birch fest for me. Um, I could end up feeling really sorry for myself or very stressed out. How do I want to re-experience this time? You may have a whole new thing that occurs to you, you know? Know yourself and you will know what you need to do. So be so very kind and gentle with yourself, but don't be afraid to look into your own upset. Don't be afraid to make that list. I was talking about where the upset is, is also where the gold is. I promise you, your life, life force energy is inside the locked places where you're not exploring your freedom yet. So the more you can liberate your upset, you know, when so and so says this thing to me, I really get pissed off. And then I react, I stomp around, and I do this thing. And then I don't, you know, I'm pouty and moody for the rest of the day. And I want everyone to ask me why I'm upset. And then I'm gonna, you know, be pouty and moody and let people know. <laughs> Look into that behavior if you can relate to that or 100,000 other ones that we fall into. Don't be embarrassed. 
who cares, you guys? Who cares if we have reactions? You know, what I care about is let's get our freedom. Let's wake up to these. Let's learn to say thank you to these reactions so we can get free. That's what matters. So look at these places in you and realize it costs me a lot of life force energy to hold on in this way. A whole host of things I need to do to keep my energy in this low vibrational place, grindy place. And so when I can, that's where the gold is. That's where all the treasures are. I have to start to look at these places where I react and tell myself, this is the experience I'm having. Am I enjoying this experience? Is this working for me? So thank you so much for for your letter, Cheryl. It's beautiful. And I hope that helps anyone else listening who can relate. And friends, I can use another letter. I'm so glad I got a few, but please message me. If you've got, if you're listening now and you're thinking of something, please message me or email me, um, Instagram direct or Facebook messaging or hello at robinhallett.com. I'm honored to shine a little light for you. And again, if you're listening in real time, there's a healing circle this Thursday. All right, friends. Well, that wraps episode 114. It's in the can, baby. It's Sunday. It's Sunday morning. I'm finishing this up early, early Sunday morning. We have a beautiful day planned ahead. The weather is so nice. We're going to go to the beach one final time to say goodbye probably for the season, (laughs) Chicago winters and beaches. I don't know. You never know. We might go, but we're going to go have a nice afternoon in the fall sunshine. And wherever you are today and however you're doing, I'm sending you so much love from my heart to yours. Now is always new and we are always choosing the experience. And if we don't love it, we can change it. This has been me, Robin, Hallelujah Hallett. I'll see you next week or in a few minutes. Bye-bye. Life is very short. Let's make the very most of it. You are a precious gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. Shine and shine bright You are a gem and I love you do, 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 do. Life is precious and you are a spark of the divine So shine like you know it Rock it like you mean it Cause you really, really mean it And mean it, and mean it, and mean it You are, cause you are, cause you are. Thank you. I like that. I love it, honey. Thank you. Give me a kiss.